Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, today we are going big. Stay tuned. So welcome to all of my crafty friends. I really do appreciate you being here. We are going to have some big time fun today. I personally need a couple of large gift bags, gift bags that are larger than I can get from a 12 by 12 piece of decorative paper. And you know what? I am going to make my bags from wrapping paper today. I have gotten that request from many of you to do a wrapping paper gift bag. Well, that's what we're doing today. So here is one of the gift bags that I've already made and you can see that it's a jumbo. This bag is almost 15 inches tall, it's 10 inches wide, and it's three and a half inches deep. So this is a really good size bag to be able to fit a whole lot of goodies in. This is actually a bag that I will be using to give a gift. And because I do have another one of these bags that I need to make, I want you guys to come along with me on this process and you'll see that it is super easy to make our own gift bags no matter the size. So y'all know what time it is. It is time to make it. All right guys, so here is a closer look at that very large bag that we're going to be making. Like I said, it's almost 15 inches high. It is 10 inches across and three and a half inches deep. Very large, you can make them even larger. You can make them smaller. It all depends on the size that you need. So I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest process for turning wrapping paper into gift bags. So this is the second piece of wrapping paper that I've chosen. And I think it's going to be great for the bag that I need. And I'm going to make it again, 10 by almost 15 inches high. So I am going to flip this sheet over. And this is a pre-cut piece of wrapping paper. And as you can see, it comes from Zazzle. If you go to Zazzle.com, guys, I am telling you, they have so many beautiful wrapping papers. So we're going to use this one and this size is 30 by 20, and it's going to be the perfect size for creating the bag size that I need. Now, what I really want you to remember and take away from this, the measurements that I'm giving really don't matter because they're measurements that I need for my project. It is the process that I'm going to be showing you that will help you to turn any piece of wrapping paper into a gift bag. So we're going to need our wrapping paper, glue, tape, a way to cut and a ruler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and guys, it doesn't matter how high up I am on the paper when I make this mark, but I'm going to make my first mark by positioning my ruler on the edge and I'm going to make a mark at three and a half. Then I'll bring my ruler over and align it with that three and a half inch mark. And I'm going to make a mark at 10. Then I'm going to slide my ruler over to that mark I made at 10. And I'm going to make another mark at three and a half. And then I'm going to slide that over, line my ruler up again, and I'm going to make another mark at 10. So the process is the first thing that we're going to do is score the width of the bag. So I know I want it three and a half inches. So that's my first score. Then how wide do I want my bag to be? I want it to be 10 inches. So that's my second score. I need to make another three and a half inch score so that it matches this one. And then I need to make the back panel score for my bag, which is 10 inches. And that's here. That is the very first thing that we need to do. So now that we have our scores going across the bottom, here's what we're going to do. I am going to bring in my longer ruler because it's just going to make this process easier for me. So what I'm going to do is take that ruler, place it on that first score that I made, and I'm just going to make a crease. And then I'm going to take that piece that I creased Make sure that it's even at the bottom. Get it nice and even at the top. And just continue that crease. Y'all, it can't get any easier. We're going to do the same thing all the way across our bag. 
So we're just going to place our ruler on that mark that we made and get your crease. And then we can fold it, get that crease there, make sure it's even at the top, and then we can reinforce that crease. And we're going to do the same thing all the way across. That's why I said my measurements don't matter because it's the process that will help you to turn any piece of wrapping paper into a gift bag. So imagine the possibilities. When Christmas rolls around again, do you have to go to the store and buy a bag? No. Do you have some wrapping paper that you bought that you liked? Take that wrapping paper and turn it into your own bag. So I'm just going to make sure I have that nice and straight at the top. And now we're going to do our last 10 inch score. And so this time I'm just going to take the smaller piece. And so I'll place it on that 10 mark. Give myself a little crease. So I'm just going to make sure that I have it nice and straight going from the bottom to the top. And you'll know that it's straight because the top will be aligned and the bottom will be aligned. So now we have all of the score marks to make a bag. So if we folded it, this is what our bag would look like right now. But we want to go ahead and make marks so that we can score at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take my ruler, position it right at the end, and I'm going to make a score at three and a half because this will be the base of my bag. So then I can take my ruler and I'm going to go ahead and make one over here as well. So make your score at three and a half. We're going to take our ruler, put it on that three and a half inch mark, and then we're just going to score. So now we can do the same thing that we did when we scored our the width of the box. We're going to take that fold and make sure it's even here and crease. And then I'm just going to bring it all the way across before I actually finish creasing it. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that these are lined up. And now I can crease. So now we have the bottom of my bag and we'll be trimming that out. And my birds are being extremely loud today. I decided after I made my intro video to come home and film the bag making from the backyard. And I think the birds are happy that I did. So now we're going to do the same thing at the top and however much you want to fold over is completely up to you. But I decided that I wanted a two inch fold over. So we're going to do that same process. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to make a score mark at two. And there's my mark. So I'm going to take my ruler, place it down and just get that initial crease going because that's really all that I need. And then I'm going to fold this, making sure that my edges are straight. And I'll go ahead and crease that. And then coming across the bottom, I'm just going to make sure that the score marks are aligned. And that way I know that my bag is nice and straight. So now I can crease all the way across. And so now we have this. We're going to go ahead and add our tape to this part of our bag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to lay it down in sections. So I'm not going to lay it on my score marks because that'll make it easier for me to fold over without possibly causing my paper to warp or crinkle. So I'll take one piece of tape, place it inside of the score mark and below this score mark. And I'm going to do this all the way across this paper. 
So I'll take my second one and I'm placing it at the top. And that way when I fold over, I'll have full tape coverage. So I'm going to take this piece and we place it right below the score mark. And then when I place this piece, I place it inside of the score mark at the top. And this might seem like a lot of work, but trust me, this is going to save you some headache of trying to fold over this whole piece with tape running from end to end. You might run into having this start to crinkle, but when we control it like this, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to do the same thing here in this middle section. I'm inside of my score marks. Take my ruler and just tear that. And I'm coming all the way across, but again, I am inside of those score marks. So I'll take my ruler and just tear my tape. Do the same thing here at the top. And I'll do the same thing on this little section here. Okay, so to recap, all we did was place the strip of score beneath the score mark and inside of these score marks and then above the score mark inside of these score marks. So now we can remove our tape and what I'm going to start out doing is I am just going to remove the tape from the center section of my bag. Take this, stand it up, and then we can just fold it over. And I have a whole lot more control than if I was to try to do this by pulling continuous strip and folding over. So now we'll just go ahead and remove these pieces from the end just by pulling them out. I'll take that, fold it over, and then I can come over to this end and remove these pieces. And now we can take that and just lay it down. We're going to turn it around to the other end, which is the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and notch out the bottom score flaps. So here in the corner, you're going to have that corner piece. We're going to remove that all together. So we're just going to angle in and then cut straight across to remove that piece. And then wherever you have a score, we are simply going to do an angle on both sides of those scores. Not a deep angle, we're just doing a very small angle. This is what we have. We can now put our bag together. So this is the flap that we'll use to place our glue. So I'm not going to put this bag together with tape because I need the wiggle room to make sure that I'm going to have my layover nice and straight. So we're going to place it just like that. And isn't that paper just beautiful? So we're going to place it just like that. Using glue will give me the wiggle room and the settlement time that I need to make sure that I have everything aligned properly. 
Okay, so I'm going to take my glue and I'm just going to put a really good coating of glue on this bag. Make sure that I have it nice and coated. And so now I'm going to take that, fold it in, and I'll bring this piece over. And like I said, I'm going to have that time to adjust and get this nice and straight and even because I have used my glue and not tape. So I'm aligning everything. And then I'll spread that glue out really quick before it starts to harden. And as y'all can see, we have a very jumbo flat fold bag. So you can make bunches of these and have them ready whenever you need a bag. Or you could take a whole roll of wrapping paper, cut it out, make bags, and that is also a great seller at your craft fairs or on your Etsy. And giving a gift of packaging is also a pretty good idea. So I'm going on the inside with my big old spatula and I'm making sure that I have everything nice and stuck. And so before I put my bag together, I have this shine bright piece of embellishment that I want to put on right there. And what this is, I got it at the Dollar Tree. It is from the teaching tree, the teacher section, and it's just classroom decor. But I like it because I think it just fits with the overall look of this bag. So I'm going to put it on now while it's still flat and it'll be easier for me to attach it. So I have added my adhesive to the back and I am just going to try to center this. And don't you think that just makes a gorgeous gift bag? Promise you, no one else is going to have this bag. So if you're going to an event and you make your own bag, it is a one of a kind. So now we can put the bag together and I'm going to hold it up Hopefully you can see this. We have our side flaps that will go in just like that. We'll bring up that back flap and then we'll bring over the top. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to see everything that I'm doing here, but I am going to take my glue and I'm going to place some glue on these flaps because I want them connect it to that bottom piece. And so I'll place some glue on that back piece as well. And then I'll add my glue on this piece. And don't worry about the glue showing on the inside because we're going to fix that. And then I'll take it and do my preliminary put together. And there's the inside. So I am taking my hand and I'm going on the inside and I'm getting everything nice and stuck. So you can see I have a nicely stuck little bag here. How gorgeous is this bag, y'all? So then I want to add a base to the bottom of this bag because it will carry a little bit of weight. And I have a piece of chipboard that measures nine and seven eighths by three and three eighths. I have some of my scrap paper and I am just going to place this down to cover it and then I'll trim this and now I can take my glue and I'm going to place my glue on the bottom and so then we're just going to take it and place it on the inside I'll show you guys in just a minute it's a little bit hard to show as I'm doing it. But hopefully y'all can see that I have that base on the inside. I am just going to keep getting that nice and stuck. And now we have our gorgeous, gorgeous gift bag. I am going to stand this up. And all I'm going to do is pinch and pinch down the sides until I have the bag that I want. You could even keep pinching all the way to the bottom if you want it. And now you see I have that bag look. So we're going to go ahead and apply our handles and y'all, we're almost finished. So I like this ribbon from Hobby Lobby and it's really wide. This is a two inch wide ribbon. And I'm going to bring in my little ruler here. Because I am going to cut off 
15 inches of ribbon. And then I'll just take this one and match it to that one. And so now I can bring my bag back in. It's going to be very simple. I am just going to take my ribbon and glue it on the inside, front and back, just like that. So we'll take our glue, place our glue on one end, and I'm going to put it wherever I want mine to be. Then I'm going to take just a little bit, put it on this end, and then I'll take my second piece, I'm going to add my glue, And then when I put it in, I'm just going to try to match it with where I have that placement of the first one. And then I'll do the same thing with this piece. I am going to just add some glue to the bottom, put it in, trying to match it with the placement of that first one. Before I do that permanent stick on this, I want to pick this up both of them with my hand to make sure I have my handles the same height and I can feel that this front handle is just a little bit longer than the back one so I can just slide it down a little bit and now my handles are both in the same position and there we have two beautiful handles on our bag and then I'm going to take some scrap and I'm going to cut out a two inch piece and I'm going to cut out two two inch pieces and I'm going to use this to sandwich in my ribbon. Now, because I'm using scrap, the size of my scrap lengthwise should not be any longer than the 10 inches. So this scrap piece ended up being seven and three quarters. So I have two, two by seven and three quarter inch pieces. What I'm going to do, and I'll try to open this up so that you can see, I'm going to take these pieces, place glue on them, and then I'm going to take it and sandwich that ribbon in between those two pieces. Not only is this going to help the ribbon stay in place, but it's giving me some added stability here at the top of the bag. So I'm going to take my glue, make sure I get a good coating of glue on this because I don't want that ribbon going anywhere. And I'm using Reptile, so I'm pretty confident that it's not but I just want to be doubly sure. So I'll pick this piece up, try to let you guys see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take this piece, put it down, and I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And then I'll stick it down, bring in my big old spatula, and get that nice and stuck. And we have a ribbon sandwich. I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take my scrap, add my glue, Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take that piece and we're going to place it down on the inside, but we're going to bring it all the way to the top so that we can make a ribbon sandwich. Then I can use my big old spatula to go in and get everything nice and stuck. I'm not concerned if I get just a little glue on that ribbon. And so there we have our second large gift bag, 10 by 15 by three and a half. This is a really good size bag. When you make your own bags using this process, your finished bag will rival any bag that's sold in the store. But the beauty of the whole thing is 
you made the bag exactly the way you wanted that bag to look. You didn't go to the store and choose from the selections they offered you. You chose paper you like and you made your own bag. This is absolutely adorable. I love it and I think that you guys are going to have so much fun making your own bags. Remember the measurements that I use are fully adaptable to any bag size that you want to make. It is that simple. It's the process, not the measurements that really matter in this particular case because the process is what you can use to make any bag for any reason, any season, any gender. So I have raised my camera just a little bit so that you guys can hopefully get a shot of the two bags together because I tell you, they are spectacular. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome process on how you can make any gift bag in any size. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. Guys, I'm gonna keep saying it. We are doing it like no other. So you guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.